Sandy says read welcome to the channel tonight we are going to do a review of a book for appreciate a dragon day it's uh, Monday January 16th is the fabulous appreciate a dragon day <sighs> and in preparation for that I have a couple of books I wanted to review for you guys and I just wanted to talk about dragons and their awesomeness so I've got a little bit of content coming at you for that Tonight is probably going to be low energy, though, because I've got a raging headache. It's been a little bit odd today trying to get stuff done with a weird headache. But before we begin, I'm going to take a moment of personal privilege, <laughs> which means I'm going to have to put timestamps on this for you guys, because, you know, those of you who don't want to hear about the cuteness of my day won't have to. I'll put a little timestamp below for when the video starts. But I want to tell you guys that today, while I was working at my desk in my den, um, these adorable little finches kept coming around my backyard with their, you know, tiny little stick twig legs um, to eat like the bugs and the mosquitoes. Because yes, even though it's January, there are mosquitoes in Florida. <laughs> and they, they kept coming around to like eat the mosquitoes or, or like the dried seeds or whatever's going on in the backyard. These tiny little finches kept coming up to the window and like clinging with their tiny little toes to the screens. It was so cute. Anyway, so that was my distraction today while I was working. I guess to take my mind off the headache, right? It was so very cute. So adorable. So there was that. Okay, there was the cuteness. Now, um, before we get started, also, I'm going to give you a word from our sponsor, which is me. I, I have, I'm not big and important, so no one's given me money to do this stuff, right? So... Um, your, your sponsorship message for the evening is, I have a merchandise shop. I, I really do. It's, um, it's a Spreadshirt shop, and I will put a link to that in the drop-down box below. It's where you can get fancy merchandise like the t-shirt I'm wearing, which has a cute little dragon on it, right? Um, all of my Team Malachi merchandise is at my shop. I'll put that below. Enough of all that stuff. Let's get started on the review, whatever this timestamp might be. The review tonight is of... Pete's Dragon, The Lost Years. Yay! All right, this particular version is by um, Elizabeth Rudnick, and this is an adaptation off of a screenplay from the 1977 motion picture. But this was released, when did she do this? This was released in 2016 from Disney Press. Um, Disney Enterprises did this, this, this fancy, you know, pretty version of the book. Um, we don't drag books on this channel, so I don't want you to hear what I say with like a complaint. I'm not complaining. It It's not as nicely edited as I thought a Disney publication would be. There's weirdnesses going on in here. I'll give you a couple of examples, but overall, I mean, it's a nice story. It's it's clever and it's cute and it's it's a nice story that you would read to your kids, right? So, so I don't want you to think I'm dragging the book. I'm dragging. <laughs> I'm not dragging the book. Um, it's it's a nice story for kids, okay? All right, what else did I want to say? Um, shout out to the artist. Uh, Nicholas Cole is the artist who did the cover design. Nice pretty colors on the back as well. And the interior images also. There's It's divided into, there's a prologue, an epilogue, and there's um, summer, spring, <laughs> spring, summer, fall, and winter, you know, in here. Okay, there's all four seasons are divided up in here. So there's four sections of like the full story going on in here. Um, and in, in each section, there's there's pictures. There's four color illustrations in here and they're nicely done. <sighs> what else did I want to tell you? Okay, that might be like the specs, right? Oh, the specs, how many pages? You guys, I should have written that down, right? Um, I would blame the headache, but I often forget to write that down, don't I? All right, what do we have? 183. Three, it's 183, 185 pages. 185 pages. There we go. And the the main character, Pete, he starts out at five years old, right? So this is a little kid that we're writing about, and it's written in the style of little kid language, right? It's it's for a little kid. So I would envision a parent reading this story to their kid, um, even though Pete goes through a couple of years. In this story, I mean, he's a couple years older. I, I don't think we get a real feel for his exact age by the end of the story. He's probably like seven or eight, maybe nine by the time we're done with the story. It's still a young kid's book. Um, I was thinking of it along the lines of like 
your first chapter book that you would read when you were a little kid? You know, like, I think my first chapter book was um, The Mouse and the Motorcycle. I always want to call this Ralph, the Motorcycle. I always want to call him by his name when I say the title of this book, but um, The Mouse and the Motorcycle. Get the glare off of it by Beverly Cleary. I love this story. But anyway, that I think that was my first chapter book when I was a kid, I think one of the first, right? But I think this would be the first chapter book for a little kid. But because the main character is only five, I don't know how many little kids would be excited to read about a five-year-old when they're seven or eight or nine years old, right? So the parents might need to read this to the kids. And, and there's one scene in particular that I think might be best if a parent was reading it to the child. And I'll read that for you because, you know, I like to give you a little flavor of the writing style. So, so I picked out that scene to read to you because it's, it's just a little bit oddly written to me. It feels that way to me as an adult reading it. As a little kid reading it, it could be just all excitement and, and fun and frivolity, right? And I think if a parent were reading it to a kid, it would be a scene of fun and frivolity. And I'll read you that scene in just a minute. That scene is um, about Elliot the dragon. It's about his tail. Now, the dragon is named Elliot because Pete has a book with him when he is lost in the forest. His, the book is about a puppy named Elliot. And this, this is a book that his mom and dad would read to him at night. And he had it with him when he was on vacation with his parents. On vacation, there's a car accident. His parents are killed. And there's Disney being all dark, right? Um, so the parents are killed and Pete is alone in the forest. Wolves are closing in to like kill and eat him. So here's Disney being dark, right? And and the dragon shows up and, and rescues him, chases the wolves away and rescues Pete, the five-year-old kid with his little backpack with his story about the puppy Elliot. So when, when Pete and Elliot, the dragon, are getting to know one another and, and figure each other out and learn how to communicate without actual words. Um, Pete names him Elliot after the puppy in the story. <laughs> but Elliot, we, we learn, like, not in the prologue, not in the first part, but in the second part, in, in the part labeled Fall, we learn that his tail and he are like separate entities, which was really kind of mind-blowing. You know, as an author, I'm like, whoa, wait a minute, how is a part of his body separate from him? They have like separate central nervous systems. It was blowing my mind, but it was very cool. Um, you know, Elizabeth, she did an interesting job of explaining that. But what happens is the, the tail, it will wag itself. It will trip Elliot. It will just, it, it bothers him. It can be annoying to him and obnoxious and it will make him have a bad day. So one day Pete is like, I'm going to help you with this because they're friends now. Right. And so Pete jumps on the tail and, and holds it down. And as a little kid hearing this story or reading this story, this is probably a very fun scene. So let me read it for you as a parent might read it for their kid. On page 74, um, Elliot is upset with his tail. He's already tried everything to put his tail in its place. Um, the boy is giggling about it, making fun of him and mocking him. And Elliot's not really excited that Pete is mocking him about his tail. So let's see. I'm sorry, pal, Pete said, his voice sounding sincere. You're having a bad day, aren't you? In response, Elliot's tail thumped on the ground. Elliot growled. It looks like your tail is being naughty. Do you want me to try and stop it? Pete asked. Elliot wasn't sure what the boy meant exactly, but to his happy surprise, the boy didn't wait for a response. Instead, he just gave him a pat on his head, walked back, and then, unceremoniously, plopped himself down on Elliot's still wagging tail. For a moment, the tail stopped moving. Elliot raised his head. He felt his haunches rear up as his tail seemed to recover from its momentary suppression and began to struggle to free itself from the weight of the boy. While not much, the weight was enough to make it difficult for the pesky appendage. It raised a few inches into the air and then fell back down. It moved a little to the left and slightly back to the right, but it didn't get too far. And the whole time, Pete held tight to the tail like a cowboy riding a very old, rather tired, 
rather tired Bronco. Yee-haw, Pete shouted, raising his little chubby fist into the air. His other hand held tight to Elliot's tail. This is so much fun, he shouted, each word in rhythm to Elliot's struggling tail. For a few more minutes, Elliot's tail tried to fight off the little boy. But for such a small human, Pete was very, very determined. No matter how much the tail whipped or snapped, he held on until finally the tail just thudded to the ground, completely spent and exhausted. So I think if you were a parent reading that to your child, you could make it very exciting, very fun, very not weird. And Disney could probably make a ride out of it at one of their theme parks. All right, what else did I want to tell you about Pete's Dragon, The Lost Years? That might have been it, right? Um, that was all. It, it was a story about two sort of lost friends in the forest, you know, getting to know one another, being rather codependent, but, you know, getting to know one another, getting to know what friendship is and, and helping each other get through just struggles of surviving. We never did find out what happened to the parents. We're assuming they're dead, which is a shame. But that's Disney, dark. That's it. Um, thanks so much for tuning in. <laughs> if you do check out this book, I would recommend reading it to your kids so that you can fill in some of the gaps that are, I don't wanna call them gaps, some of the little weird inconsistencies in the editing, just some of the funky stuff. You can fill it in, you can read it with your kids and enjoy it that way. Good introduction to a fun dragon. There'll be more dragon stuff here as we celebrate Appreciate a Dragon Day. Thanks so much for tuning in, you guys.